and I want everybody here to imagine this. You're in your house, you go to open the faucet, and no water comes out. You go into the bathroom, you go to take a shower, no water comes out. You go outside, you go to water your lawn or your garden, and no water comes out of the hose. Well, this is where we're going to be heading if we don't do something about this drought. This drought is a lot worse than we think it is, and I believe we need to create more sense of urgency by becoming more aware and becoming more educated on this drought. Today I will be talking about some of the history of the drought in California. I will be talking about some of the effects that it's had on us in the last couple months, in the last year. And I'll also be talking about some of the solutions that we can all do here. So to start off is the history. California has always been a state hit with a lot of drought. And everybody thinks that, oh, it's just another drought. Especially with the rain now, everybody thinks, oh, the drought is over. That's definitely not true. In 2013, California received less rain than any year since it became a state in 1850. Also, with some of the historical you know, big droughts that we've had in California dating back to 850, we've had droughts that have lasted over 240 years. And after that one ended about 50 years later, we had one that lasted about 160 years. We can track these things by looking at tree rings, looking at soil sediment, and we've documented droughts lasting 10 to 20 years in the last thousand years. So as you can see on this graph, it's the fluctuation of how the amount of percentage of the United States drought. So for example, the worst one we've had was 55% uh, and the closest one we've had since that time was in 2013 at 49%. This graph right here shows the severity of the drought throughout the United States and as you can see, California has the worst. Pretty much the whole side of the West United States has the worst drought since in decades. Now that you know some of the history, I'm going to talk about some of the effects. It's affected not only people, but it's affected wildlife, it's affected our resources. There's actually an article talking about the city of Porterville, which is actually not only about three, three and a half hours away from here. And they talked about how hundreds of families have gone without water and how they had to uh, create a program to support these families just to get through their day. Another one is that in the Central Valley, there's places where the water has dropped about 20 meters. So as you can see, in this before and after picture, this was you know a couple years ago, and now this one is just last year in 2013, how the water has dropped. And in this picture right here, it's a picture of a hatchery from Sacramento, in which they have to evacuate all the fish, because since the water is dropping, the water is also heating up, which is killing all the baby fish. So they ended up having to evacuate thousands and thousands of fish from that hatchery to another one. Now that I've talked about some of the effects, we have to talk about a solution. So as you can see here, it's save water. The world is in our hands, and it really is. One of the first things that we can all do is becoming more aware. There's an article talking in San Jose Mercury News that said that San Jose wasn't ready to find people because in cities like Sacramento, Pleasanton, and Santa Cruz, they're finding people and actually finding them to you know, find them for their overuse of water. San Jose said that they wanted to create more of an educational and educate people more and have them reduce their water that way. Some of the simple things we can do at home, of course, include taking shorter showers, include using the faucet you know, uh, efficiently, so when you're brushing your teeth or doing the dishes, making sure that you close the faucet, and even small projects like using, um, you get a plastic bottle, you fill it up with some rocks or some sand, and you can put it in the back tank of a toilet, and that actually, when you flush, it won't use as much water, saving up to five to 10 gallons. So imagine we have about 20 people in here, that's over 100 to 200 gallons of water saved each day. Another thing we can all do is just checking for leaks. Leaks are a big important part. People don't think that just because it's just a drop that it's not important, but that's definitely not true. Just leaks in, in general can end up using a lot of water. So now that you know some of the solutions and some of the history, uh, I'm actually going to give you a positive note. In San Jose, we wanted to reach a 20% reduction in use of water, and we've actually gotten it down to 14%, which is a lot better than a lot of the cities around us. So if we can just put a little bit more effort, becoming more aware, becoming more educated, 
then we can get up to 20% and even surpass that. I hope everybody here learned something today, whether it was something historical, whether it was a new effect, or something, uh, whether it was a new solution. And we, can, we cannot ignore this. This is happening here in the United States. This isn't just happening in third world countries. And I want to leave you off with this. Ask yourself this. Do you want to live in a country like this? Think about it. You decide.